All right. Welcome. Welcome. We are practicing and looking at our assignments for this week. And uh, just a heads up in the stream, I always post every Monday, what's due this week? We have to do our attendance. Just get 10 points for logging in and trying the question of the day. And then uh, our reading and slide deck, um, that's due by Friday. And I'll try to get uh, through that and get it back to you by Monday. You can redo it until you get the grade that you want. Don't forget, I ready. And then Thursday, we're doing a little writing activity. We're going to be um, uh, practicing some typing and uh, doing some other activities this week on Thursday and try to do a little writing as well. So those are the things that I'm grading. This Thursday one is actually kind of a bonus. I'm putting bonus points in for other things that you don't do if you show up to class and participate on Thursday online with me. So um, it's also a good opportunity to make a time, an individual time if you need it. All right, and then uh, back in the classwork again. The thing I wanna talk to you about today mostly is our ready reading assignment. And you can see that um, when you look at the assignment, let me try to see if I can find one that nobody's done one yet. I'll jump into Aurelio's for a minute, okay, because I'll do some of it for you, Aurelio, that way you can kind of see which ones you want to try yourself. And I'm sorry that this is just so ginormous. I can't seem to make this top part be smaller. My, my computer at home is so small, it's hard to show it, but um, this week, uh, your goals are to um, complete uh, the yellow boxes and the ready reading passage, and we're going to look at a PowerPoint and slides um, to learn a little bit more about subject and object pronouns. Okay, make sure you hit submit only after you filled in the slides and come to the class today is a great idea. Um, if you look at slide two this week, what you'll see is that I actually have um, a little video that you can watch that will tell you more about subject and object pronouns. You just have to click on it. So um, there's also this right here. Um, the chart right here is what you're going to use to do your activity. All right. So just real quickly, what are subject and object pronouns? Well, if you go back to the, um, let's see if I can get back there. If you go back to the class, um, if you look in, let's see if I can get there. Um, I actually posted, I think I did anyway, um, this little PowerPoint. This PowerPoint um, talks about some of these terms like uh, the case and the perspective. Okay, case means that it's either a subject or an object pronoun. And the, the subjects are the nouns that um, take verbs. In other words, they come before the verbs and they're doing the action. All right. And nouns that do not take verbs or come after the verb, right, are the objects. So it says, Captain Jones waved around his saber and threatened the landlubbers. Landlubbers are the people that are not sailors, right? They threatened all the landlubbers. So Captain Jones is your subject. He's doing the action. He's waving and threatening. And the landlubbers are receiving the action. They're the objects. Okay. So if you're looking at uh, pronouns, you could say, I taught myself to skateboard because nobody else would teach me. And you'll see that you're going to use the subject pronoun I, not me. You don't say me taught myself. You say I taught myself. Right. And so that's what they mean by case. Is it a subject or is it an object? And then you've got some other kinds of noun uh, pronouns we'll talk about next week, like myself, which is a reflexive, and then me, the objective. So this little PowerPoint presentation, it talks about when do we use I, when do we use me, when do we use myself, right? And once again, you don't want to sound uh, unintelligent, like you're using the wrong pro pro pronoun in your sentence. Um, Here's the personal pronouns that take a verb, okay? You've got I and we, and the objective is me, us, you, it, him, her, them. And they all come after the verb. So the natives were delighted to meet us. You don't say they were delighted to meet we, 
it's us. So that's the basic thing. You can look through the rest of these. There are some really helpful things here in this um, in this little slide deck, right? It's a, it's a PowerPoint. Also, I've got this chart. So just to show you, your activity this week is to circle things that are correct. Um, you have to circle the bold pronoun. Um, and you have to decide if it's objective or subjective case. So how do you do that? Well, it's pretty easy. All right, all you have to do is take a look at the sentence. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see. Oops, you can see it better. No, this is kind of too big, huh? Uh, see if I can get it right here. Okay, so you can see that you're going to circle. And the way we circle is we just go up and we find the little bar here. And you click it and you do scribble. When you scribble, it allows you to just do, draw a circle. So it says, I went to the mall. I is what? Subject or object? Well, you can tell if you can't tell just by looking at it, by looking at the chart. It says, first person, I is subjective and objective is me and us. So notice how they're, they're teaching two things here. They're saying that if you use I and we, it's a first person type of story like you would for a personal narrative if you use you like you go to the store you see a friend you do this or that then that's second person right that is the um the point of view basically that the story is being told or third person is when they say he went here he did this or she went here and she did that then that is um, the third person. So they're asking you for two things, but if you're not sure how to do it, just look at the chart. The chart here will tell you all the answers. So the first one, you've got, I went to the mall. Well, I'm gonna click on my little scri scribble here. And I is a subjective pronoun. How do I know? Because if I look on the chart, it says I is subjective. And also because it comes at the beginning of the sentence, it is doing the action. I am the one going to the mall, not me go to the mall. All right. So those are your choices. I for subjective or me. All right. And it's first person because as we saw in our chart, first person, right, subjective is first person. So if you're not understanding everything yet, you could still do the activity just by looking at the chart. The chart will tell you which one's the circle. Okay? Questions so far? Yeah, that's a lot of talking, huh? All right. And so why are we doing this? Because people are writing different kinds of things that you need to know what to use so that you sound intelligent and act like you understand language, right? And for most of us, we can hear that it's right or wrong. For example, on number two, you've got two people doing something. He and she bought groceries to eat for dinner, right? So what did he and she do? Bought. So this is your verb. If it comes before the verb and it's doing the action, then this is a subjective pronoun. And in fact, there's two of them. Notice how it's he and she, right? And if you want to look at the, at the chart, he and C is third person. So if you're not sure where, if it's third, first, or second person, just look at the chart. It'll tell you. Third person means that it's I'm not doing the action or telling the story, right? Somebody else is, right? I'm sort of looking at it and telling a story in third person. All you have to do is circle third person, right? Once again, how did I know that that's right? Because I looked it up on my chart. And also down here, there's some more examples that you can look up. All right, notice how the objective case comes after the verb. Mike hit who? He hit me. Me didn't hit anybody, right? And so we're going to be talking more about these pronouns and about how objects, not just pronoun objects, but how those receive action. I'm going to do one more with you. This one says, don't mess with them. So notice um, this comes after the verb. In fact, it's actually the object of the preposition. 
And those are always objective case. So I look up on my chart on slide two. It looks to me like objective, right, is, let's see, what was the question? It had, oh, them. So them is over here in the objective. And it's also in the third person. Okay, sorry, I know this is kind of maybe a little bit too big. All right. So you can see your chart will tell you the answers. All right. And uh, don't forget that um, once you look them up, you have to go back and you can um, use your scribble. Them is an objective case. Right. And as we saw in our chart, it is also third person. I got my scribble again. Okay. How's the questions going? Questions from anybody? All you have to do is look at the chart. Uh, no questions. Okay, good. Because the do you see how you can just go back and forth from the chart and it's just circling? Okay, I think most people can do that, but if you're confused, let me have that. Uh, you can do it and send it to me. I'll give you some feedback or come and see me. Okay, so that's the first part. There's nine of those to do right there. The next part is this little story you have to read. It's about, um, and I thought, uh, Jeremiah, you might enjoy this in particular because it's about horses helping others. Um, they're going to talk about how um, the kids are interactive. This is the word interactive right here. How the kids are interactive with horses and it helps them kind of like therapy okay and it talks starts talking about um this this person aaron livingston was just 11 when she had an idea she wanted to use horses to help kids with special needs along with two friends she researched different programs and with the support of the mendocino county 4-h ridgewood trail was born okay so this is about uh somebody that was uh, trying to get uh, kids to interact with horses. Um, and this is really close to me too because my niece is uh, very active um, with um, horses and she's learning to be a physical therapist. And she's been doing this kind of activity with kids for years. Um, she's like, oh, I don't know, I guess she's like 18, 19 years old now. And um, so she's actually studying to become a therapist. Um, but she's been helping and volunteering for these uh, programs um, at her where she lives as well. So um, they're going to talk about these horses. Freya, Kiss, Easy, Ginger, and Robin are horses with a very important job. They help kids with special needs. And some of these kids are in wheelchairs and walkers. So some of them have physical disabilities, right? And some can't talk for some reason. And some are very high energy and need to learn to focus. So students that have these kind of disabilities, they can come out and do these programs. You can see in the picture, maybe if I make it a little bit bigger, that he's actually grooming the horse. So it's not just about like riding them. <laughs> horse looks a little scared there. Um, but it's not just about, you know, riding them. It's about what the kids are learning and, um, and how they interact with the animals as far as taking care of them. So Aaron uses games to help kids learn to communicate with horses. And for example, a rope is attached to the halter. That's the part up here by the bit, right? JJ, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, to the halter of the horse and the student holds the other end and wiggles it to make the horse back up, okay? And then the student wiggles it again to invite the horse back into his or her space. So they're teaching kids how to interact and have fun with the horses. So they don't just say, come on over and ride this horse and they walk away like they're helping them um, by using these different games to communicate with their horses. And you can see that, um, you know, here's kids learning how to ride. <laughs> and it's funny because like I am not a horse person at all. Every horse that I've ever interacted with, even when I was a kid, just scared me and uh one horse just laid down <laughs> while i was on it and one horse like tried to knock me off by going underneath a, a porch and i had to lay down on the back and one horse just took off one time i have not had good horse experience so anybody that can uh you know 
interact and get to learn to love horses. I have a lot of respect. I learn horses a lot. I know. I was going to say, now, this hopefully would be an interesting uh, story for you to read, JJ, to see about the, the horses. And um, what do you think about, like, are they are they helpful? I mean, is it helpful to go out? Do you feel good when you're riding and I also have uh, something. There's, like, safety. Approach the horse from the front, not the back. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, yeah. You could that walk as soon as they know, like you're back there. I they're okay with it, but like yeah. when you approach the back, they're gonna kick you. Yeah, that's a really good. That's a really good bit of advice, and you'll see, like in the pictures uh, on our thing, that nobody's standing behind that horse, and in fact, like they've got this little thing for them to get up on, right, and get ready to ride. Um, so yeah, you're right, and that's part of it. Like these are big animals. So you have to treat them with respect and you have to be calm. So you can see good program horses are calm, patient and understanding. Okay. The, the horses have to have a certain disposition as well. And they have to be used uh, to people, right? The, this is all about the, the um, horses. And uh, there could be up to two or three helpers walking alongside a rider, right, in case the horse gets nervous, loud noises and sudden movements, right? So you can't have a horse that's all nervous, right? And uh, it's exhausting work, but the next day they're back at it, patient as ever, just another day at the office for these amazing horses. So, uh, you know, having the horses be ready, they get to interact with people, and they have to have the right temperament is what that's called. So there's a few more um, paragraphs. You might want to read um, information about this program and enjoy reading about that. And then when you get to this part, what you're going to do is we're looking at how do we learn new words when we read, right? So this question is two parts um, and uh, part A, then part B. And you're going to pull the yellow square over to the right answer, right? A, B, or C and drop it. That's, that's how you answer. Okay, and the word is interactive, okay? It obviously has to do with acting and, you know, around people, okay, that kind of thing. It says reread paragraphs three and four. So you go back up and you look at three and four. Three set, talks about the, um, the games that they use to have the horses interact. And uh, on slide five, it's just paragraph four, it says, through interactive games, the horses help the kids learn about trust, keeping themselves safe, and being sensitive to a horse's feelings and body language. So that's what the interactive games do. Inter means among or between, and active means doing something. So interactive games doesn't mean that you're going to sit there and watch somebody else do it. Like you're going to be part of that. You're going to interact with the horse, right? So when you come back here, it says, what is the meaning of interactive? Acting apart from each other or acting, acting, uh, B says, acting like each other or C, acting in response to each other. Like the horse does something and then you react to it, right? You interact with it or acting politely. So I would say you probably could get rid of D, they didn't really mention like being polite, like bow and shake hands and stuff like that with your horse. Um, there is a respect part involved, but it's not really, that's not really what interactive means. Okay. And A is not right because acting apart from each other, that's not what this is. This is acting together, right? Interact. So what do you guys think? B or C, acting like each other or acting in response to each other? What do you think? Um, Guys, do you think it's B or C? You can type in or you can say B or C. Why oh, lost JJ? Ah, come back. C. Good job. Right there. Right? That's how you would do it. Okay? So um, this part right here in B, it says write one sentence from paragraph three or four that helped you. You actually copy a sentence. Right? You have to go back here. And say, okay, which one? I think this one right here is the best one, where it says, um, "Oops, at the top," where it says, uh, "Whoop." Let's see if I can get back to this one. 
Uh, through interactive games, the horses help the kids learn about trust. So this could be a, sen a sentence that you would want to do or part of the sentence, right? The horses help the kids learn about trust. So I would type that in right here. It says an entire sentence, but I don't think you have to do the whole thing. The horses help the kids learn about trust. Okay. And by playing games, right? And that kind of thing. So you could talk about the games that are interactive or something like that. Okay. Interactive means that you're doing something in response to the other thing. Okay. So even if you just do all of the multiple choice ones, um, I think that, you know, some of these you have to click on the line tab and underline the sentence that supports your answer to this one. So if you need more help with this part of the activity, that's fine. I will be available um, individually or you can also uh, come to class again on Thursday and I'll review some more of these. Um, I'm recording this. So if you're not sure uh, how to answer some of these or how I did what I did, right? Um, you can see that I've put some things in for you, uh, but feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to, read, to meet with anybody Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. I have individual times. Um, and Cynthia, if you're available, you can you know, work with some of the students um, and help them as well. So I'm gonna turn off my recording for now. Stop my recording. <laughs>